Nothing's wrong. Huh? Nothing's wrong. Go back to bed. Are you sure? I am sure. Go back to bed. <laughs> oh, God, God, God! <laughs> what is it? Can't you sleep? If I could sleep, would I be sitting here calling God at 2.30 in the morning? <laughs> What's the matter? Do you know it's 12 degrees in there? July 23rd, middle of a heat wave. It's 12 degrees in there. I told you, turn the air conditioner off. Then how do we breathe? It's 89 degrees out there. 89 degrees outside, 12 degrees inside. Either way, they're going to get me. You could leave the air conditioner on and open a window. No, it doesn't work like that. The minute the hot air sees an open window, it goes in. You can turn the air conditioner off for an hour, and then when it starts to get hot, you can turn it back on again. Every hour? Seven times a night. Well, that's a good idea. I'll get eight minutes of sleep in between work and the air conditioner. I'll do it. I'll get up. Look, I told you a million times to call that office. That air conditioner hasn't worked properly in over two years. I called. A man came. He couldn't find anything wrong. Nothing wrong? I got it set on low. It's 12 degrees in there. Well, it's not 12 degrees, Mel. It's cold, but it's not 12 degrees. All right, it's 17 degrees, 29 <laughs> degrees, 36 degrees. It's not 68, 69, temperature for a normal person. I'll call them again tomorrow. Why do they have to bother marketing high, medium, and low? It's all high. Low is high. Medium is high. One night, I'm going to set it on high. They'll need a flamethrower to get us out. <laughs> what do you want me to do, Mal? Do you want me to turn it off? Do you want me to leave it on? Just tell me what you want me to do. Go back to sleep, Edna. I can't sleep when you're tense like this. I'm not tense. I'm frozen stiff. <laughs> I'm 23. You're tense. You were tense when you walked in the house tonight. You've been tense for a week. Do you want to sleep out here? I can make up the cot. Sleep? You can't even sit out here. Why do you have these stupid little pillows on the chairs, huh? I mean, why do you spend eight hundred dollars on a chair and then you can't sit on it because you got these stupid little pillows shoved up your back? I'll take the pillows off. Just go inside, Edna. I'll be in later. It's not the air conditioning. It's not the pillows. It's something else. Something's bothering you. I've seen you when you get like this. What is it, Mel? It's nothing. I I'm just tired. I'm up, Mel. You might as well tell me. It's nothing I'm telling you. Oh, I don't know. It's everything. It's this apartment. This building. It's this city. Listen, listen to this. 2.30 in the morning. There's one car driving around Jackson Heights, and we can hear it from here. Fourteen stories up, I thought it'd be quiet. I hear the subway better up here than I hear it in the subway. It's like we're some sort of damn bandana. All the sound comes up through this apartment and then out to the city. We've lived here six years. It's never bothered you before. I don't know. It's getting worse. I, I don't know why. It's, I'm getting older. I'm more sensitive to, to sound, to noise, to everything. Would you look at this? I had that door open ten seconds. Now you gotta wash these pajamas. Give them to me. I'll get you clean pajamas. Two thirty in the morning. Can you believe that's still going on next door? What's going on? What? Do you mean to tell me you can't hear that? What? What are you what? deaf or something? Maybe I'm deaf. I don't hear anything. <laughs> Seriously, you don't hear that. You don't hear that? You? What are you deaf? You mean to tell me you can't hear that? I must be deaf because I can't hear anything. <sighs> Listen, for God's sakes, you don't hear raindrops falling on his head? <laughs> Too big for his feet. You don't hear that. Not when you're singing. I don't hear it. It's those two damn German airline hostesses. They've got someone else in there every night. Two basketball players, two hockey players, whatever team is in town, win or lose, they end up in there. Somewhere there's a 747 flying around with people serving themselves, because those two boards never leave the apartment. Come here. Tell me you can't hear that. Yes, now I hear it. You see? Is it any wonder I can't sleep? Don't sleep with your head next to the wall. <laughs> Keep it down in there, huh? It's 2 damn 30 in the lousy morning. I cracked the wall. I barely touched it. The wall was cracked. It was starting to crack before. There's a leak somewhere. One of the pipes upstairs is broken. A ten million dollar building? You can't touch the walls? It's a good thing I didn't try to hang a picture. We all could have been killed. They know about it now. They're starting to fix it on Monday. No, not Monday. Tomorrow. I'm 
want that wall fixed tomorrow, it's a health hazard. And they're going to repaint that wall. And if it doesn't match, they'll redo the whole room. And if that doesn't match, they'll repaint the whole apartment. And I'm not paying for it. I will tell them. And tell them about the air conditioner that doesn't work. Oh, and that window in the bedroom that won't open unless it's raining. And then you can't close it until there's a flood. <laughs> and tell them about that toilet that won't stop flushing. It stops flushing if you jiggle it. Why should I have to jiggle it? For the money we're paying, I should have to stand over a toilet in the middle of the night and jiggle every time I go to the bathroom. When you're through, tell me. Get back into bed and I'll jiggle it. <laughs> <laughs> Attack. I'm just a little tense. Well, why don't you take a Valium? I took one. Well, take another one. I took another one. They don't work anymore. <laughs> Two Valiums? They have to work. They don't work anymore, I'm telling you. Look, they're supposed to calm you down, right? Do I look calm to you? They don't work anymore. I don't think they put anything in them anymore, you know? They just charge you $14 for the word Valium. <laughs> hey, don't you ever fly anywhere? Keep someone in Europe away. Stop it. You're really making me nervous now. Is something wrong? Why do we live like this? Why do we pay hundreds of dollars every month to, to live in an egg box that leaks? You don't look well to me, Mel. You look haggard. You look pale. I wasn't expecting to be up. Why are you rubbing your stomach? I'm not rubbing it. I'm holding it. Why are you holding your stomach? It's nothing. It's just a little indigestion. It's probably that crap I had for lunch. Well, where did you eat? In a health food restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you can't eat health food. What the heck can you eat anymore? I'm probably just hungry. Do you want me to fix you something? Nothing is safe. You know, I read in the paper today that two white mice at Columbia University got cancer from eating graham crackers. It was in the New York Times. Is that what's bothering you? Did you eat graham crackers today? <laughs> that food used to be so good. I used to love food. I haven't had food since I was 13 years old. You want some food? I'll make you some food. I remember how they made it. You know, I haven't had a real piece of bread since then, in, in 30 years. If I'd known that was going to happen, I would have saved a couple of rolls when I was a kid. <laughs> God, you can't even breathe in this place. Today, I forgot how to use the water cooler. 
I sat there with an empty cup in my hand and water running over my shoes. It's not just you, Mel. It's everybody. Everybody's feeling the tension these days. The tension? If I could just feel tension, I'd give a thousand dollars to charity. When you're tense, you're tight. You're holding on to things. I don't know where to grab it, huh? I'm slipping. I'm scared. Hey, don't talk like that. What about seeing the analyst again? Who, Dr. Pike? He's dead. <laughs> After six years of my life and $23,000. <laughs> sure, he's got my money. What does he care if he gets a heart attack? <laughs> there are other good doctors. If you could see someone else. And start again from the beginning? Good afternoon. Have a seat. What seems to be the problem? It will take me another $23,000 just to fill this doctor in on the information I already gave the dead one. <laughs> Disappearing, Edna. I don't need therapy. I need lost and found. Listen, listen, what about if we get away for a couple of weeks? A two week vacation, someplace in the sun, away from the city. You can ask them for two weeks sick leave, can't you, Mel? Even the cactus is dying. The strongest plant in the world. You only need to water it twice a year. Couldn't make a go of it on 88th and 2nd. Answer me, Mel. Off? Yeah, I could ask him for two weeks off. I'm just worried they'll ask me to take the other 50 as well. <laughs> what are you talking about? You've been there 22 years. Mel, is that it? Is that what's bothering you? Are you worried about losing your job? No, I I'm not worried about losing it. I'm worried about keeping it. Losing it's easy. But has something happened? Has anyone said anything? need to say anything. The company's lost $3 million this year. Suddenly, they're looking to save pennies. The vice president of my department has been using the same paper clip for three weeks. This is a 62-year-old man with a duplex on Park Avenue and a house in Southampton. He's running around the office screaming, where's my paper clip? No one's actually said anything to you. They closed the executive dining room. No one goes out to eat anymore. They bring a sandwich from home. Top executives, $80,000 a year, guys. They're sitting there with an egg salad sandwich over the waste paper basket. Well, nothing's happened yet, Mel. There's no point in worrying about it now. Well, what are you going to do to work late tomorrow? Everyone's afraid if you're not there on time, they'll sell you a desk. <laughs> <laughs> what if they did? We'd live, we'd get by, you'd get another job somewhere. Where? I am going to be 47 years old in January. 47! Then you get two 23 and a half year old kids for half my money. <laughs> All right. Suppose something did happen. Suppose you did lose your job. It's not the end of the world. We don't have to live in the city. We could move to the country or even out west. And what am I going to do for a living? Become a middle-aged cowboy? <laughs> They'll put me in charge of rounding up the elderly cattle. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? The girls are in college now. We have enough to see them through. We don't need much for the two of us. You still need a place to live. You need clothing. You need food. A can of polluted tuna fish is still 85 cents. <laughs> well, we could move to Europe, to Spain. Two people can live for $1,500 a year in Spain. Yeah, Spanish people? I'm 47 years old with arthritis in my knees and high blood pressure. What, do you expect me to raise goats and live in a cave? <laughs> you can work there to get some kind of a job. <laughs> An advertising account executive? In Barcelona? Yeah, they've probably been standing at the end of the dock for years waiting for someone like that to show up. <laughs> what is it here that's so damn hard to give up? What is it that you'll miss so badly, for God's sake? I'm not through with my life yet. I still have value. I still have worth. But what kind of a life is this? You live like some kind of a caged animal in a Second Avenue zoo that's too hot in one room and too cold in another. Overcharged for a growth on the side of the building they call a terrace that can't support a cactus, let alone two human beings. Is that what you call a worthwhile life? Banging on walls and jiggling toilets? Do you think it's any better in sunny Spain? You go swimming on the beach, you'll spend the rest of the summer scraping the oil off. <laughs> Forget Spain. There are other places we could live. Where? Maine? Vermont? You think it's all rolling hills and maple syrup? Let me tell you, they got more people on unemployment in Vermont than they got pancakes. <laughs> Washington or Oregon, they got unemployed lumberjacks. They're sawing the legs off of chairs because they got nothing better to do. <laughs> I will go anywhere in the world you want to go. I will live in a cave or a hut or a tree. I will live on a raft in the Amazon jungle if that's what you want to do. Well, 
great college travel agent get us two economy seats from Bolivia. Tomorrow we'll stop at Abercrombie's and pick up a couple of pith helmets and a spear gun. Don't talk to me like I'm insane. Look, Edna, I'm halfway there. You might as well catch up. <laughs> I'm trying to offer reasonable suggestions. I'm not responsible. I'm not the one who's doing this to you. I never said you were, Edna. Well, then what do you want from me? What do you want from anybody? Just a little breathing room. Just for a little while. Who could that be? You don't think that could be the office, could it? At quarter to three in the morning? Yeah, maybe they got the night watchman to fire me. They'd save a day's salary. <laughs> third strike of the week. This time, the city employees of 37 New York hospitals walked out at 3 p.m. this afternoon. The mayor's office has been flooded with calls as hundreds of patients and elderly sick people have complained of lack of food, clean sheets, and medicines. One 79-year-old patient in Lenox Hill Hospital fell in the corridor, broke his leg, and was treated by a 73-year-old patient who had just recovered from a gallbladder operation. <laughs> Two of the most cold-blooded robbers in the city's history today made off with $4,000, stolen from New York City home for the blind. Police believe it may have been the same men who got away with $3,600 on Tuesday from the New York Cat and Dog Hospital. Water may be shut off tomorrow, says New York Commissioner of Health, because of an anonymous phone call made to the Bureau this morning, threatening to dump 50 pounds of chemical pollutants in the city's reservoirs. The unidentified caller, after making his threat, concluded with, It's going to be dry tomorrow, baby. And from the Office of Police Commissioner Murphy, a report that apartment house burglaries have risen 7.2% in August.
lost three in a row. <laughs> Nobody's 
should have said, excuse me, shut the door and come back later. What would you do, <laughs> sit and watch? Why do you ask me stuff like that? It didn't happen, did it? Well, it almost happened. I just walked in five minutes sooner. Oh, no, it couldn't have been just five minutes. It took the seven Santini brothers two days to move everything in here. Three junkies are not going to move it out in five minutes. suits. Didn't have to say anything. 
We knew right away. We saw it coming. Even the secretaries knew. They couldn't look at you when you said good morning. $85 a week girls were bringing me coffee in Danish and not charging me for it. <laughs> I knew right away. Mel, Mel, Mel. They said they had no choice. They had to make cuts right on down the line. Seven executives, 12 salesmen, 24 in office help. 43 people in one afternoon. Took three elevators, two trips to get rid of all the losers. And the coffee and Danish man comes in tomorrow. He's going to throw himself out the window. <laughs> I meant to come home to this. To get fired and find out that your house has been robbed. It didn't happen today. It happened Monday. Monday? You mean you've known for four days and you haven't said anything to me? I didn't know how to bring it up. I, I was trying to work up the courage. I thought maybe I'd find another job. Maybe a miracle would happen. Miracles don't happen when you're 47. When Moses saw the burning bush, he was 23, 24 tops. <laughs> Never 47. $3 worth of 
packaging. Telephone calls to find out what time it is because we're too lazy to look at the clock. The food we never ate. The books we never read. The records we never played. Uh, look at this. $8.50 for a musical whiskey pourer. $8.50. God forbid we should get a little bored while we're pouring our whiskey. Boys, toys, novelties, gimmicks, trivia, garbage. It's crap. It's horseshit. No more, Mel. We'll never buy another thing, I promise. 22 years I gave them. 22 years of my life. And what did I give them 22 years of my life for? A musical whiskey pourer? It's my life that's been poured down the drain. And where's my user? Huh? Where's my cute little tune? They kicked you out after 22 years since you get a goddamn brass band. Uh, no, just calm down, Mel. You're gonna get yourself sick. You wanna know where it is, huh? You wanna know where my music is? There! There it is! Play it on the other side of that wall! There's my music after 22 years! What? Uh, what is it? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. It's just some pains in my chest, all right? <laughs> it's not a heart attack. What? Why are you saying that it's not a heart attack? Because it's not a heart attack. It's pains in my chest. Well, why are you having pains in your chest? <laughs> because I don't have a job! Because I don't have a suit to wear! Because I am having a nervous breakdown and they didn't even leave me a goddamn pill to take. You bastards! You dirty bastards! Shut up, John Dan! There are children up here! Don't you yell at me! They took everything! Everything! They left me with a damn pair of pants and a golf hat! There are children up here! You drunk or something? Drunk? Drunk on what? They took my liquor! <laughs> you wanna keep your children safe? Lock them up! Don't tell me you got kids up there! Show them now. 
down Fifth Avenue, whichever way it is you protest. 15,000 women all shouting, save the environment, and they're all wearing leopard coats. <laughs> Just the hypocrisy. Come on and sit at the table. I've got some apple juice for us to start. Isn't it terrible about the commissioner of police? I mean, kidnapping the New York commissioner of police. Is that insane? God, if the police can't find him, they can't find anybody. <laughs> We are so busy, we don't even have time for a coffee break. You know he's going to ask me to work nights? I just know it. I just don't know what to say to him. I mean, he's been so nice to me, buying me sandwiches two or three times a week. Not that I don't deserve it, the way I've been working this past month. But I am just not going to work nights down there, too. I don't even have the strength to talk when I get home anymore. <laughs> So 
I could take longer walks. <laughs> I read every page of every book in this apartment. I read every label and every can in that kitchen. Tomorrow, I'm going to read underwear sizes. Then I'm done. <laughs> I got nothing left to live for. I'm sorry. I know you're bored. I know you're unhappy. Just tell me what I can do to help you. I am 47 years old. Do you have to come home every day to make me lunches? I want to make you lunches. I'm working. I have a job. I never see you. At least this way we get to spend an hour every day together. Don't you see how humiliating it is for me? Everyone in the building knows that you come home to make me lunches. The only people in this building who get lunch cooked for them every day are me and the six-year-old girl on the fourth floor. <coughs> I don't care what people in this building think. But I care. I care. They probably think you make me take a nap. I could make my own lunch. Oh, really? I could go out to eat. Just trying to save us money. Well, what are you going to do in the winter when it snows? You going to come home and put on my like, galoshes? Is this what you do all morning? Walk around the edges of the apartment thinking of things like that? Torturing yourself? I don't need to torture myself. I got barking dogs and jiggling toilets and the Red Baron's two sisters over there. All right. <laughs> what did they do today, Mal? Tell me. No, I don't want to bother you with it. You have your own problems at the office. You've got a living to make. Don't worry about the house. That's my concern. Thought we agreed about my working. I thought we agreed that I could take this job until something came through for you. Oh, I'm not complaining. You've been very nice to me. You pay the rent. You buy the food. You bought me a nice new sports jacket. Maybe next year you'll take me to Hawaii on United Airlines. Do you want me to quit? Do you want me to leave this job? I will leave the minute you say so. You know I will. Not right now. Margaret Truman has Bess Meyerson on this Friday. I don't want to miss that. <laughs> you think I haven't been looking. You think I haven't tried. That's what you think, isn't it? I don't, Mal. I swear I don't. I know how hard you try. There are no jobs for 47-year-old men. Nothing. Here, read it. It's in the New York Times. I went out this morning and took it from the people next door. That's right. I steal newspapers now, Edna. Please, not talk about it anymore. Do, do you want some milk? I can get you two quarts every morning. If I put on my slippers, they don't hear a thing. Stop it, Mal. I don't think that's funny. Just trying to contribute. Just trying to do my share. Just come here, sit down, and eat your lunch. It's the last time. I promise I won't make it anymore. Well, why should you? When you could be in a nice Japanese restaurant eating sukiyaki with Mr. Cooperman, sitting around with your shoes off. I have never had sukiyaki with Mr. Cooperman. How about fettuccine with Mr. Feidelson? Hey, I know it goes on in offices, huh? I used to be one of the boys, too. Well, I'm not one of the girls. Then why do you get home at 7 o'clock when everyone knows no one works past 5? I work past 5 o'clock. Where? At Charlie O's? <laughs> yeah, I understand. A little drink to unwind before you have to go home and face the little man. <sighs> I don't believe what I'm hearing. You used to believe it when I came home at 7 o'clock. Well, you think it's some kind of picnic sitting around this apartment all day, wondering what's going on in that office building? Huh. You should try it sometime. I feel like I'm watching my whole life running backwards on a movie screen. Maybe that's why I can't get a job. Maybe if I put on a wig, some high heels, and some hot pants, they'd hire me in a second. You know what, Mel? I would leave your lunch here. Eat it or not, do whatever you want. I'm leaving. I can't talk to you when you're like this. Well, have a nice day, dear. Don't work so hard. Oh, and leave me some quarters for the laundromat. You know what I would suggest, Mel? What? What would you suggest, Edna? I would suggest that you either get a very tight grip on yourself, or you look for someone to help you. Well, I don't need any help. I'm retired. I got a maid. I know what I mean, Mel. Medical help. A doctor. Someone who can talk to you and straighten you out, because I'm running out of energy and patience. You think it's all in my head, don't you? You have no inkling of what's going on. You are so naive, it's ridiculous. What are you talking about? What's going on? You think it's some kind of accident that I can't find any work? You think it's just bad luck? You think I'm just having a, a streak or some bad breaks? Is that what you think? I think it's the times now. I think we're going through bad times. You have no suspicion of the truth? None at all? What truth are you talking about now? I'm talking about the plot! The what? plot, Edna! What plot now? What plot now? I'm trying to tell you about a plot, and all you can say is, what plot now? I don't know what plot you're talking about. You mentioned something about a plot, and all I can think of to say is, what plot now? What plot? Jeez! What plot? What plot? I'm talking about the economic, social, and political plot to undermine the working classes in this country. Oh, that plot. Yes, that plot! <laughs> Instead of rushing downtown, 
anymore. It's theirs. They have our music. Yeah, all of it. Our arts, our media, every form of mass communication. They got it all, baby. Don't get mad now. Who? Who? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, for God's sake. Who? Well, oh. I have to be back in the office in 20 minutes. Please tell me who's taking over so I won't be late. <laughs> all right, have a seat. Would you please just sit down? Do I have to? Is it a long name? Just sit, for God's sake! All right. Once you get rid of the middle class, what do you have left? What's left? After you take away the middle class? The lower class and the upper class? I can't talk to you anymore. <laughs> I'm talking about. You've never 
stood online for two hours waiting for an unemployment check, wearing a shirt and a tie, trying to look like you don't need the money, with some loud mouth thing standing behind the counter, screaming out in a voice so everyone in the room can hear. Did you look for a job this week? Yes, I looked for a job. Did you turn down any work this week? What in God's name would I be doing here if I turned down any work? <laughs> you would never come into your building and had a 91 year old doorman with no teeth, asthma, and beer on his breath giggling at you because he's working. You would never stood on your own balcony and been hit with a bucket of ice cold ice water. Oh, I haven't forgotten that son of a bitch. I haven't forgotten you, you oh, son of a bitch. Well, don't start it again. I am waiting. I'm just waiting. Oh, he's up there now. But one day, he'll be down there. And I'll be up here, and then we'll see. Oh, one cold, snowy day. Some son of a bitch in this building is going to find out what it's like to be hit with three feet of snow. They won't find him till the spring. They won't find you till the spring, you bastard. Listen to me. I want you to listen to me very carefully. I want you to see a doctor. I want you to see a doctor as soon as possible, Mel. I don't want to put oh, it off any longer. He thinks I don't know I what he looks like, him. huh? Oh. I know what he looks like. I know what they all look like. I got their faces engraved in my now, brain. Someone gave me the name of a doctor. They say he's very good. And he knows about people who have gone through what you're going through. And I'm going to call him and make an appointment now. I'm going to call They can get your clothes in. They can get your clothes. They can get your television. They can get your values. They can get your red label whiskey. They can get your jobs. They can get everything. Everything except your brain. That is my secret weapon. That and the snow. Oh, I hope it snows today. I bought a shovel. I'm huh? I bought a shovel. I'm going to call right now. I got myself a big shovel. <laughs> I will go without shoes this winter, but I will go without my shovel. I will bury him so deep they have to salt him out. Mel, Just. Mel, I won't go back to the office this afternoon. If he's free, I'm going to take you there myself. Don't stand near the window, Mel. I live for it. I live for the first snow of winter. I know what time he comes home. 5.15! I asked the doorman. <laughs> I had to give him a $5 tip. It was worth it. <laughs> I know what time you get home, you bastard. Oh, oh yeah, try using the service no. entrance. I got that blocked off, too. Stop just right here, please. I know what you look this like. Edna, Edna, thank you. Do you have any idea, any conception of the impact of two pounds of snow falling from a height of 14 stories? <laughs> oh, they'll find him in the parking garage. No. Incidentally, is entering its 57th day of the hospital strike. We will not go back to work, was the cry of 47 municipal, state, and federal judges today, defying the court order of federal judge Myron Ackerman. Speaking for the striking judges, Judge Mario Pocona told this to CBS reporter Bethesda Wayne. We will not go back to work. Judge Pocona, isn't this strike unconditional? Yes. But we will not go back to work. Well, how do you feel about the 273 people in prisons now awaiting trial? We are underpaid. We will not go back to work. Do you still feel this way despite the fact that the president has threatened to bring in the National Guard to run the courts? He can do what he wants. We will not go back to work. The 6 o'clock report will follow with a film story of how 20 million rats survive under the city. But first, this message from Ultra Bright Toothpaste. He was always nervous. Always. As far back as I can remember, he was nervous. Never sat still for a minute. Always jumping up and down. And my lion pearl with his own sisters who should know better. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> He wants a coffee, Harry. Take some coffee. I don't drink coffee. He always used to fidget. Talked a mile a minute. He even chewed fast. Remember how fast he used to chew? Who oh, wasn't I there? Didn't I see him chew? I remember. <laughs> Harry, why don't you take some coffee? 
When did you ever see me drink coffee? You're my sister, 53 years. You never saw me drink coffee. Why would I drink coffee now? And I see you, what, two times a year? I thought maybe you took a coffee. He wasn't nervous. He was high strung. Melvin was high strung. I call it nervous. As a baby, he was nervous. As a boy, he was nervous. In the army, he was nervous. How long did he last in the army, anyway? Two weeks. Oh, there you are. He was nervous. Where do you think nerves come from? The country are made high strung. The boy on the ship was high strung. How could Papa talk to him? Mel was three years old when Papa died. If they weren't so nervous, Papa could have talked to him. <laughs> I never drank coffee in my life. <laughs> and it's poison. It goes right through the system. Who's she on the phone with in there anyway? He had the same thing in high school, a nervous breakdown. Remember when he had the nervous breakdown in high school? Who are you talking about? Well, he had a nervous breakdown in high school. You don't remember? What are you talking about? He never had a nervous breakdown. He had a broken arm. He fell in the gym and broke his arm. <laughs> I'm not talking about that time. And once on his bicycle, he broke his tooth. I'm not talking about that time. Then what are you talking about? I'm talking about the time he had a nervous breakdown in high school. I remember it like it was yesterday. Don't you tell me, Polly. You tell him. Mel never had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I thought he had a nervous <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. <laughs> you can't even remember I don't drink coffee. <laughs> he must have had some terrible experiences in the Army. In two weeks? He wasn't there long enough to get a uniform. <laughs> There was never anything wrong with Mel. Never. His only problem is that you baby him. All of you. He was a baby. Why shouldn't we baby him? You baby him. That's his problem. He never had the responsibilities as a child like I did. That's why he can't handle problems. That's why he flares up. He's a child, an infant. What if I put some milk in your coffee? <laughs> I don't want any coffee. He doesn't want any coffee. Leave him alone. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when Mel was a tiny baby, didn't you think his head was too large for his body? <laughs> Mel? Mel had a beautiful head. I didn't say his head wasn't beautiful. I just said it was too large for his body. It kept falling over to one side. <laughs> All baby's heads fall to one side. I know that. But he had trouble getting his off again. <laughs> I was never baby. Papa wouldn't allow it. I wasn't kissed since I was seven years old. Certainly you were kissed. I was never kissed. I didn't need it. The whole world kissed Mel and woo -woo, look where he is today. <laughs> Who's she talking to in there anyway? Remember the summer he ran away? He didn't run away for the whole summer. He ran away for one night. Who said he ran away for the whole summer? Who said he you said he you just said? Remember the summer he ran away? So he ran away one night, one summer. But you should say it that way. Say, remember the summer you ran away for one night. Don't make it sound like you ran away for the whole summer. That crazy, he never was. Who said Mel was crazy? Did anyone hear me mention the word crazy, Jesse? Did you hear crazy from me? <laughs> I heard crazy. I didn't hear where it came. If that's what you believe, then you're the one that's crazy. <laughs> All right. If it makes you happy, I'm crazy. But me, the crazy one. Fine, then it's settled. You're the crazy one. Look, I gotta get back to the office, and Jesse's going back to Lakewood tonight. Let's let's settle this. What are we gonna do? About what? About what? <laughs> about the Suez Canal. What do you mean about what? <laughs> what are we doing here? What did Jesse come all the way from Lakewood for? What did what are we doing in this woman's apartment to which we've not been invited for nine years? Our brother, our poor brother, who's had a nervous breakdown, for God's sakes. Oh, every time I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you crying for now? You didn't just find out. You've known for a week. You think I haven't been crying all week? He's my brother. It hurts me. It hurts all of us. That's why we're here to try and do something. Harry, let her cry if she wants to. She came all the way from Lakewood. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Harry. Fact number one, Mel was had a nervous breakdown. Fact number two, Mel lost his job. He's totally unemployed. Oh, every time I hear it. <laughs> Jesse, let him finish. You can cry on the way home. Fact number Go on three. with the facts, Harry. Fact number three, besides being, 
totally broke and not having a job and then having a nervous breakdown, the man is practically, practically penniless. I'm not passing judgment on how a man and a woman can mishandle money for 27 years. I'm not saying anything about how a man could squander his life savings on bad investments for which he never once came to me for advice. The kind of advice which has given me solvency, security, and a beautiful summer home in the country. Thank God I'll never have a nervous breakdown. That's not my problem. Our problem is, what are we going to do for Mel? How much are we going to give? Somebody make a suggestion. <laughs> well? Harry, you're a businessman. You make a suggestion. You tell us how much we should all give. <laughs> Let me have some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face the facts. Who else can you turn to besides us? Okay? My suggestion is that we make Mel alone. We chip in X number of dollars a week, and then when he gets back on his feet and things get straightened out, he can pay us back. What do you think? Pauline has a question. What's the question? How much is X number of dollars? <laughs> X is X. It's a blank. We'll, we'll talk and we'll decide. I mean, is it a big X or is it a little X? <laughs> it's not even an X. It's, it's a blank until we come up with a figure to fill it in. I'm not complaining. We have to do the right thing. But when you say it like that, X number of dollars, <laughs> it sounds like a lot of money. I have limited capital, you know. Everyone has limited capital. No one has unlimited capital. Pearl, do you have unlimited capital? Well, I wish I did. I'd give Mel X number of dollars a minute. <laughs> All I'm asking is, how much is X? I can't figure with letters. I need to know numbers. Harry, don't say X anymore. We're not business women. We don't know about X. Say a number that we can understand. I can't give you a number until I know, A, how much we're willing to give, and B, how much Mel needs. So I can't tell you what X is until I know what A and B comes to. <laughs> All right. Suppose we figure out what A is and what B is, and then if we know that, we can figure out what X is, right? Right. And now, suppose everybody here agrees, except one person. She thinks it's too much. She doesn't want to give X. She wants to give M. <laughs> Whatever. What do we do then? Forget X. Forget I ever said X. Well, the most important thing is for Mel to get well. Okay, his biggest expense is the doctor. Edna says that he's the best, and he has to go five times a week. Five times a week to the best doctor? We <coughs> need to see what X is going to come to. <coughs> Maybe it's not even a nervous breakdown. Doctors can be wrong, too. Remember your pants last year, Pearl? That's true. They took out all my top teeth, then found out it was kidney stones. <laughs> To. You're 160 years old between the three of you, and not one of you makes any sense. <laughs> if you all just sit down and be quiet, I'll settle this. All right. Sit, sit, sit. We're quiet. Settle it, Harry. Okay. The most important thing is for Mel to get well. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. And the only way that he's going to get well is by seeing a doctor. Agreed? Agreed. And, and it's our responsibility as his closest living relatives, besides his wife, no disrespect intended, to bear the responsibility of that burden. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. And we need to see this through to the end, whether it takes a week, or a month, or a year, or five years. Agreed? Okay, our first disagreement. <laughs> No one's disagreeing. We're all in agreement, except when you mention things like five years. I don't see any sense in curing Mel and ending up in the poorhouse. And if God forbid that should happen, would he be in any position to help us? He's not too able to begin with. Harry, you know how to figure these things. What are we going to do? 
But we can't let Mel be sick forever. We've got to put a time limit on it. Agreed? <laughs> so uh, how long do we give him to get better? Six months? <laughs> it shouldn't take six months if that doctor's as good as Edgar says. It shouldn't take six months. Shh. She's coming. We'll let Harry do all the talking. And then we'll settle everything. Thank God it's almost over. I'm sorry that was so long. I was just talking with Dr. Frankel. Mel's on his way home. He'll be here in a minute. Uh, how's Mel? What's the doctor say? It's very hard to say. Mel's having a very rough time. He's in a very depressed state. He's not himself. He's completely withdrawn. He sits in this chair sometimes for hours without saying a word. You'll see when he gets here. He's just a different person. Oh, every time I <laughs> So what is it? A nervous breakdown? Is it a nervous breakdown? Because you can tell us we're his family. It's a nervous breakdown, isn't it? Yes, in a way. I suppose you could say it's a nervous breakdown. I knew it. I knew it. He had the same thing in high school. <laughs> <laughs> What's the diagnosis? What's the doctor say? Mel needs care and treatment. He's a very good doctor. He thinks Mel will be all right. It's just going to take time. How much time? <laughs> a month? Two months. More than two months? He can't tell yet. He can guess, Candy. Three months. Four months. More than four months? There's no way of telling yet, Pauline. It could be a month. It could be two months. It could be two years. <laughs> no, that two years is out of the question. I refuse to go along with two years. I'm not saying it will be. I'm just saying we don't know yet. Can I say something? Can I get a word in? I wish you would say something, Harry. I wish you would do the talking. Thank you. Because two years is ridiculous. Go on, Harry. And the word, we're very concerned. Very concerned. After all, he's our brother. Since he was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> we're all very concerned. We know that you're his wife, and you're going to do everything that you can, but we know it's not going to be enough. So we've talked it over amongst ourselves, and we've decided to bear the responsibility of the doctor bill. So you will, you will take care of the, the apartment, the food, the miscellaneous, and we'll pay the doctor bills, <coughs> no matter what they come to. I'm overwhelmed. I'll be very truthful with you. I never expected this. I'm deeply touched and overwhelmed. I don't know what to say. You don't say anything. Just tell us what you think the bills will come to. It's very generous of you. I couldn't let you do that. Mel wouldn't let me do it. It would be ridiculous. Where are you going to get the money? From a bank? You can't put up a nervous breakdown as collateral. <laughs> but I have no idea how long Mel will be in treatment. It could run into a fortune. You don't worry about that. The money we'll take care of. But it could run as high as twenty twenty-five thousand dollars <laughs> Can I say something to you in private? We're not having any private discussions. Don't you think we should discuss that a little bit further? We're not discussing anything. Look, we're going to take care of the medical bills. You can contribute whatever you can. I'll pick up the deficit, whether it's fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars, as long as Mel gets the best medical treatment. That's all I've got to say. I'm speechless. What do I say? Well, you don't say nothing. We just want to do the right thing. I know that none of us have been very close for the last few years. Nine. <laughs> Nine years. We're the last time they were invited. Has it been that long? Well, I suppose that's my fault. Maybe I haven't tried to understand you. Maybe you haven't tried to understand me. Anyway, I appreciate it more than you can imagine. But we really don't need it. Don't be ridiculous. Certainly you need it. Over the years, we've managed to save a little something. Well, I have some jewelry I You're can sell. You're not selling your jewelry. Maybe she doesn't wear it anymore. Mel <laughs> <laughs> can cash in his insurance policy. And, well, I have my job. We can manage whatever the medical expenses come to. But if you really want to help, what I'm worried about is Mel's future. We all are, darling. It's very difficult for a man of Mel's age to get a job today, to start all over again. If he knew lighting fixtures, I'd take him in a minute. Certainly, my God. If he could just 
get out of the city and move someplace into the country, he'd be a hundred percent better off. I agree a thousand percent. I was thinking of a summer camp. And that was wonderful with kids and with sports. And well, I would do the cooking and the girls would help out and we'd hire a small staff. There's a lovely place in Vermont that's for sale. We can have it by next summer. Don't you think Mel would be better off there? Again, a thousand percent. They want twenty-five thousand down in cash, so instead of giving us the money for a doctor, would you lend it to us for a camp? For a summer camp. Twenty-five thousand dollars for a summer camp. The price is a hundred thousand. They want twenty-five thousand down. <laughs> Something's wrong. 
Someone here is sick? No, no, no. No, everyone's fine. We just want to talk. I just had such a nice walk. Isn't that wonderful, Mel? You always love to walk. Jesse, do you remember how much I used to like to walk? <laughs> yes, Mel, I was just saying that. You're looking very well, darling. Well, thank you, Pauline. Are you feeling uh, all right? What's that, darling? I said, are you feeling all right? Am I feeling all right? <laughs> yes, I just had a very nice walk. Oh, <laughs> that's nice, dear. Where's Pearl? Did Pearl go home? Here I am now. I didn't go home. Hiding again. Always hiding. Mel. Yes, Harry. Now. Harry has something he wants to say to you, Mel. What is it, Harry? <laughs> Nothing, Mel. Nothing. You don't look well to me, Harry. You're working too hard. Don't work so hard. I won't know. You need to learn to relax. There are three things I learned at the doctor. One, you need to relax. Two, don't take life so seriously. And three, be very careful what you say when you're on the balcony. <laughs> Dan Jennings sitting in for Roger Keating, who was beaten up last night outside the studio following the 6 o'clock report. A Polish freighter, the 6,000 ton Mioska, sailed into the New York harbor in dense fog at 7 o'clock a.m. this morning and crashed into the Statue of Liberty. Two seamen were injured and electrical damage caused flickering in Miss Liberty's torch. It was the first recorded maritime accident involving the famed statue, although the Polish freighter had been in six previous sea collisions. And today, in a midtown hotel following a convention of the National Psychiatric Society, 17 of the leading psychiatrists in the United States were trapped between floors in an elevator for over 45 minutes. Panic broke out when 12 of the doctors were treated for hysteria.
You come back from work, it kills me. Look at you, you're, you're worn out, you're, you're breaking your back. And for what? To give $40 an hour to a pipe cleaner? I'm telling you, I can't take it anymore. I can't watch you turn yourself into an old woman. All for me. And where's the point in it? By the time I'm all better, I'll be too young for you. Yeah, she's in the tub. She's not feeling very well. 
it's all right. I understand. She doesn't want to see me. No, it's not like that, Harry. She's just very tired. No, the woman doesn't like me. That's absolutely fine. I mean, hey, the whole world can't love you. I feel badly that it's my brother's wife, but that's what makes horse racing. Well, <laughs> I'm only going to stay two minutes. I want to deliver something in person, and then I'll go. You drove eight miles to drop off a bag of apples? Well, it's very sweet, Harry, but it wasn't necessary. Uh, not the apples, now. I have something a little bit more substantial. Here, this is for you and Edna. The apples are separate. And what's this? It's a check. It, it's the money for, for your summer camp. Go. Go. July and August, take care of 600 running noses. Have a great time. <laughs> this is $25,000. Your sisters and I contributed equally, 50-50. I'm going to tell them about it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't understand, Harry. Neither do I. Why someone would want to open a summer camp? But if it makes you happy, it makes me happy. No. Harry, when did Edna ask you for this money? What's the difference? It's all over. Everybody got a little excited. Everybody just wanted to do the right thing. Just take the money and open your crazy camp. Look, Harry, in the first place, thank you. In the second place, I can't take it. Why won't you let me do this for you? Why won't you give me the satisfaction of making you happy? You already have by offering it to me. Now make me even happier by tearing it up. If they see you with this much money in this neighborhood, you won't make it back to your car alive. <laughs> you let everybody else make you happy. You let everybody else do things for you. Edna, Pearl, Jesse, Pauline, everybody but your own brother. Why am I always excluded oh, from a family? Man, listen. They're three middle-aged widows. They're looking for someone to take care of. I made them a present. I got sick. What do you want from me, Harry? <laughs> At 13 years old, I had to go to work. I didn't have a chance to be the favorite. This again? Listen, Harry, if you want to be the favorite, I give it to you, OK? I'm going to call the girls tonight and tell them from now on, you're the favorite. <laughs> I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming you. I mean, it only makes sense if there are two brothers in the family and one of them is working out, out, you know, working out all day long, the one who stays out gets to be the favorite. Harry, I don't mean to be impolite, but, but Ed's not feeling well. We got no water in the apartment and all our food is defrosting. I'm just not in any mood to discuss why you're not the favorite. I lived in that house for 31 years. Not once did anyone ever see me happy birthday. We always had a party for you. We always give you a big cake. I had cakes, I had parties. No one saying happy birthday. <laughs> and this year I'm gonna hire a big chorus and we're all gonna sing you happy birthday. 11 years old, I was wearing long pants. At 14, I had a little mustache. At the movies, I had to bring my birth certificate. They wanted to charge me the adult prices. <laughs> you grew up very fast, Harry. Did you ever see Pearl's family album? There's not one picture of me as a child. I skipped right over it. There are thousands of pictures of you on, on bicycles, on ponies, and barber chairs. There's one picture of me in the back of a 1938 Buick. I look like Herbert Hoover. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry. I'm going to tell you something now. Something I never told anybody before in my life. You don't have the brains for business. You can't handle money. You can't handle emotional problems. You're a child. You're an infant. You're a spoiled baby. And God is my judge. Many a night I lay in my bed envying you. <coughs> isn't that something? For a man in my position to envy a man in your position, isn't that something? What I have, you will never have. But what you've got, I like that just once. Just for an hour, that's what it feels like to be the favorite. What if I give you a big kiss, right on the mouth? You kiss me, I'll break every bone in your body. I'll call you. Forget everything I said. I don't want to be the favorite. Not if it means being hugged and kissed by Jesse and Pauline. Hey, look, try it. You might like it. I tried it. I didn't like it. Look, how about if I lend you $12,000? Start a small camp. Maybe five boys, two girls. How about if I just give you a little kiss on the cheek? You're not getting better. I don't care what they say, you're not getting better. Goodbye, Harry. Edna! Edna! What is it, Mel? What did he say? Is it about the water? You asked Harry? You asked my family for $25,000 for a... I didn't ask. They 
offered the money for a doctor. I told him I didn't need it for a doctor. I needed it for a camp. Don't you see how humiliating that is for me? You asked my family for money. You didn't ask. You weren't the one who was humiliated, and I was. I was the one who had to stand in front of the Spanish Inquisition. You were out having a nice tranquilized walk in the park. Tranquilized? <laughs> tranquilized? I was sedated, Edna. Not tranquilized. Sedated. Well, I don't care if you were petrified. I was the one who was humiliated. Next time you'll be humiliated, and I'll be sedated. I just got over a nervous breakdown. Have you no respect for a man's illness? You don't sound sick to me now. You sound like you always sound. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about then. I was sedated and not tranquilized. Sedated. Well, I wish someone would sedate you now so you'd stop yelling at me. You shut up down there, you hookums. Who are you calling the hookums? You're only the loud man one man. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you call us names. Your husband isn't half the man my husband is. We haven't forgotten about the water. We remember. Thank <laughs> you. 